Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna continue learning about logging in Python. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on basic logging, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch and understand that video before jumping into this one. Now, in this video, we'll be learning about loggers, different handlers, and a couple of other things. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you watched my first video, then you'll see that I have the same two files here that I used in that video. I have this uh, super simple application with some short functions here, and it's basically where we left off in the previous logging video. So just to recap, we imported logging and we set some basic configuration here. The configuration is that we're logging to this sample log file. We're setting the log level equal to debug. and our format, we have a custom format here where we're using the time, the name of the logger, and the message. And then here at the bottom, we are logging out some statements using our logging.debug. Now we have another module here in this employee class where we pretty much did the same thing. We're importing logging. We're setting up our logging with a file equal to employee.log. Our log level here is set to info, and our format for this log file is our level name, uh, the name of the logger, and the message. And then we're doing a logging.info here every time we create an employee. So that is where we left off of the last video. So let me go ahead and run this employee module here. And when I run that, it creates this employee.log, and I'm going to open that up. Now in our employee.log, based on the formatting that we have set, this logs our log level, this root here, and then we have the message that we passed in. So now I'm going to go back to my simple application here, and I'm going to run this. And here we had this set to sample.log, and we can see that that sample.log got created. I'm going to open that up. Now the formatting here we had set a little bit differently. Here we're using the time. So we have the time, this root, and then the message that we passed in. So I said in the last video that we discussed what this root message right here means. And basically what this means is that since we haven't specified a specific logger, we're working with the root logger. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing when working with smaller applications and specific files, but it's best to get into the habit of logging to specific loggers that can all be configured separately. Now we're gonna take a look in just a second of how to get a specific logger, but real quick, let me show you why working with this root logger isn't the best idea. So first, let me delete these employee and sample logs here. So I'll delete that employee log. I'll delete that sample log and then close these down. Don't want to save those. Now from within my simple module with these calculator functions, let me import the employee module. So I'm just going to do that right under logging here. I'll do import employee. Now, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but when you import a module, it actually runs the code from that module when it's imported. So when I imp import my employee module, it should come in here and create these employees and log those. So now from this module where I'm importing employee, I'm going to go ahead and run this module. Now, we can see in our file system that it created this employee.log file, but our sample log file that we specified here isn't there. And if I open up my employee log file, we can see that it only logged out our created employees. Um, so what happened here? Why didn't this file create its log, its sample log, and or execute these log statements down here at the bottom? Now, the reason it didn't do that is because when we set up this logger here within this employee class, it configures the root logger here with this file name, this log level, and this format. Now all that got set up first because we imported employee and this module is sharing that same root logger in this script. So by the time we get to configuring our logging within this script, the root logger is already configured with those other values. So this doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't overwrite those initial configurations. Now the only reason our log statements aren't logging down here at the bottom is because the root logger got set to that info level within the employee module, so debug doesn't hit that level. Now if we were to change these here to info statements, and I was to rerun that, now if I pull up this employee log file, then you can see that it did log the information uh, from that script that has the calculation functions. 
But still, even though we did get those to log somewhere, uh, this is still kind of a mess that we're sharing this root logger. We're not getting the log file that we want, we're not getting the log levels that we want, and we're not getting the formatting that we want. So let's get a new logger for each of our modules so that we can configure both of them separately. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close this log file down. And within the employee module here, I'm going to create a logger variable. And I'll just do this uh, above our configuration here. So I'll say logger equals. Now to get a new logger, I'm going to say logging.get logger. And now we need to specify a name here. Now I could hard code any name here that I want, but a convention when naming loggers is to use this special double underscore name method or variable, I'm sorry. Now, if you don't know about this name variable, then I do have a video that explains that, and I'll link that in the description section below. But basically, when we execute this module directly, this name variable will be equal to double underscore main, and when this code is executed from an import, its name will be equal to the module's name. So I'll call this double underscore name right here, and we'll see exactly what this equals in a second. So now we're getting a new logger here. And if this logger doesn't exist, then it'll be created. So now I've got a new logger and this is a step that some people forget. So now that I have this logger variable and we're working with a specific logger, we should now use this to run the log methods. So down here where I'm saying logging.info, instead now I wanna use that variable that we just created. So I'm gonna say logger.info. Now one nice thing about these loggers is that they are within a hierarchy. So if this employee logger doesn't have something set, then it'll fall back to the root logger. So for example, this logging basic config is still configuring that root logger. So even though I'm using this new logger here to run this info method, if I run this code, then it still doesn't print to the console. It still will create you know, an employee log file and log the messages to that employee log file. Now we can see here that it ran our info logs. Now one thing to notice here is that now it's telling us that we're using this double underscore main logger and not the root logger like it was before. Uh, these log messages are from previous runs. Okay, now let's switch back over here to employee real quick. Okay, so we're still configuring this root logger with this file name, log level, and format. Let's instead configure our specific logger here uh, with those values and leave our root logger alone. So first, to specify the employee log file that we want to log to, we have to add a file handler. And to do this, I'll make a new variable, and I'm just going to call this file underscore handler. And I'm going to set this equal to logging.filehandler. Oh, looks like I spelled that wrong there. Okay. And what we're going to pass into that is just the name of our log file. So we just want to pass in employee.log. So now we have this file handler, but it needs to be added to our logger. So to do that, we can say logger.add handler. And then we'll just say to add that file underscore handler. Now I know that this seems like more steps than our basic configuration, but just bear with me here and we'll see how this has a lot of advantages. Okay, so now with this file handler, we want the formatting to be the same as what we specified in our basic configuration. Now, I think the code that I have here is just the default configuration anyways, but let's go ahead and add that formatting to our file handler. Now, we're going to be adding this formatting to the file handler and not the logger, um, so keep that in mind. So to do this, we can first create a formatter, and I'm going to do that here at the top. I'm just going to say formatter is equal to logging.formatter, and then what we're going to pass into that is our format string here. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in. And then we're going to add this formatter to our file handler. And to do that, I'm just going to go right underneath our file handler here and say file handler dot add formatter. Oh, uh, sorry about that. That's not add formatter. That is set formatter. And then we are just going to pass in that formatter that we just created. Okay, and lastly, let's set the log level on this employee logger. And to do this, we can just uh, come up here to the top after we create this logger. I'm going to say logger.setLevel. 
And I'm just going to set that to the same level that we had in our basic configuration. So I'm just going to say logging.info. So at this point, we should be able to delete our basic configuration. We have all these set on our specific logger. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this basic configuration here. And just to make sure that this is working, let's also go ahead and delete this employee log file and start from scratch. And I can already see I have a typo here. Let me fix that and save it. Okay, so now let me go ahead and rerun our code here. Now it created our employee.log, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And you can see that within here, it logged all of the lines that we specified with the correct format. So now let's jump back over to our other script where we, employ, where we imported the employee module. Let's scroll back up here to the top. Now remember that before this gave us problems because we were sharing that root logger. But if I rerun this now, then we can see that this time it did create this sample log file. Now if I open up that sample log, then we can see that we have that different formatting with the time set first. Um, so we're logging the time and then the logger. And in this case, it's still the root logger. And also we are logging out our message. And now let me open up the employee log file. And we can see in here that it logged the values correctly. And it gave the name of employee uh, for the logger this time. And that's because this module was imported. And if we run that directly, then it would be equal to this double underscore main up here. But since we imported that, it got set to employee, which is the name of the module. Okay, so real quick, let's go ahead and uh, set up a logger for this other script uh, that we're currently in so that we're not using the root logger within here either. Now, I'm going to copy a lot of this code from the employee class. So I'm going to grab all of that and paste that in here. And now we can set up this logger any way that we want. So I want the logging level, I'm going to set that to debug, basically everything that we have down here in our basic config. So this file handler here, instead of employee.log, I'm going to set that to sample.log. And for the format, I'm going to use the format that we have here that has our time included. So I'm going to switch that out. And that does it for configuring this specific logger. So now we can delete this basic configuration. And before we run this, remember, this is one thing that a lot of people forget. Uh, when we call our log methods, now we need to use our specific logger instead of the logging module. So I'm going to grab our logger here, logger variable that we created down here at the bottom. Instead of doing logging.info, I want to do logger.info. And actually, instead of .info, I'm going to do .debug. Okay, so now with all those changes in place, I'm going to go ahead and rerun that and look at both of my log files here. So we can see that it logged those values and that's not using that root logger anymore, so that's good. And the employee log file should be the same since we didn't change anything there. And yeah, we can see that it's still adding logs to that file as well too. So now let me go ahead and delete these files one more time here. And let me delete this sample log file, okay. Now one good thing about setting your logging up like this is that now you've got a lot more flexibility. Um, it's nice how this hierarchy works. So for example, let's say that we wanted our logger level in this module here set to debug, uh, which it currently already is. But now let's say that we only wanted our errors or worse uh, to get logged to the sample log file. Now to do that, we can set levels on the file handlers themselves. So if I wanted to keep my logger level set to debug, but wanted to only capture error statements and above in this specific file handler, then what I could do is take this file handler here and just say file handler dot set level. And I'll set that equal to logging dot error. So now if I rerun this code, then it created our log files. I'm going to open up our log file and there's nothing in our sample.log. We can see that it didn't log those debug statements because the levels didn't match. So let's log something that's an error so that we can see something get added to our file handler here. Um, so within my divide function, um, I'll put in a try accept block that makes sure that we catch a division by zero error. So to do that, I'll just do a try. I'll say result equals x divided by y. And then for an except, we're going to 
I catch a zero division error. And within that zero division error, that's where we'll do a logger. And we want this to be an error log. So I'll do logging.error. And for the message here, I'll just say tried to divide by zero. And now let's put in an else statement for our try accept block. And for that else, I'll just say return result and get rid of this outside return statement there. So now with that code in place, I can rerun this and we can see that it still works. But now let's change our second number here to a zero, which will make us divide by zero and throw that error. So now if I run that, now it looks like nothing happened, but if I go to our sample.log file here, now we can see that we had a log put in here where it said tried to divide by zero. Now a personal preference of mine is that anytime that I'm logging an error, I usually like to include the trace back so that I can get more information about what exactly happened. And the logging module allows us to do this very easily. Um, we can just do that by changing this logging.error instead make that logging.exception. So now let me rerun that code again and switch back to our sample log file. And you can see that now included in our log, uh, we got that we, we tried to divide by zero, but it also included the trace back here with some more information. Okay, so let me go back to our script here. Um, so another good thing about this being modularized uh, is that it's easy to add multiple handlers to a logger. So for example, let's say that we did want to see these debug statements that we're executing down here at the bottom but we only wanted to display those to the console. Um, so what we could do here is create another handler, but instead of a uh, file handler, what we're gonna do is create a stream handler. So let me show you how this works here. So we can just come down here and create a, another handler, and we'll call this stream underscore handler. I'll set that equal to logging.stream handler, and that's not going to take in any arguments. And now we don't need to set a log level on this because our logger already has a logging level of debug. So now let's go ahead and add this new stream handler to our logger. And all we have to do is do the same thing that we did when we added the file handler is logger.add handler. But now we're gonna also add on a stream handler. So now that you, now you can see that we have both the file handler and the stream handler added to this single logger. So now if I run this code, then you can see that it logged our debug statements in the console. Um, and also these errors show up here too, but those are also getting sent specifically to the log file with the error logs. Now, one thing to notice here is that the formatting to the console isn't the same that we had in our file, but setting this is just as easy as it was for the file handler. So what we'll do here is where we set this formatter on the file handler, I'm just going to come underneath and paste that for the stream handler and do the same thing. Stream handler dot set formatter equal to that formatter that we have at the top. Or we could create a completely new format for the console if we wanted, but I'm just going to leave it the same. So let's go ahead and rerun that. And now you can see in the console that it has the format that we specified. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for this video. Um, hopefully after these videos, you have a good idea for how you can begin to add logging to your projects. Um, this is something that almost every project needs in production at some point. Um, and good logs can save you a lot of headaches when trying to debug problems. You know, if you are interested in going even more advanced than this, then I would suggest getting on the Python documentation and looking up all the uh, different handlers that they have because, you know, you can set it up to where um, if you get an error, then it sends you an email or uh, gets added to a queue or something like that. Um, they also have rotating logs so that one log file doesn't build up too much. All kinds of functionality built in here to the logging module. And if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Um, now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And it's also very helpful to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, then you can contribute through Patreon. And there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. And thank you all for watching.